everyone, it's me Shanti and you're watching Biology Nowadays. In this video, we will learn about xylem, which is one of the complex permanent issues present in plants. As you already know, on the basis of whether the cells in the tissue are similar in structure or not, permanent tissues are divided into simple permanent tissues or simple tissues and complex permanent tissues or complex tissues. Simple tissues consist of one type of cells and complex tissues consist of two or more types of cells. In the previous lecture, we already learnt about the three kinds of simple tissues. Parenchyma, Cholenchyma and Sclerenchyma. Now, let's discuss about the complex tissues in plants. A complex tissue is a group of different types of cells that perform or help to perform a common function. As you know, simple tissues are composed of either living or dead cells. But complex tissues contain both living and dead cells. Complex tissues also contain both thin-walled and thick-walled cells. Two complex tissues found in plants are xylem and phloem. Xylem tissue is specialized for water transport, whereas phloem tissue is specialized for food transport. Xylem and phloem are found in almost all parts of the vascular plants. These tissues form a continuous system that spreads in roots, leaves, stems, etc. and act as a continuous channel for the conduction of water, mineral elements and prepared food. In this video, we will discuss about xylem. Xylem functions as a conducting tissue for absorbed water and minerals from roots to other plant parts. In other words, they are the water pipes of the plant. The fluid transported in xylem is called xylem sap. Water flow in xylem is unidirectional. That is, water flows only in one direction, from roots to other plant parts. Most of the xylem cells have hard cell walls with deposition of lignin and thus xylem also provides mechanical support to the plant parts. The word xylem is derived from the Greek word xylon, meaning wood. In trees, what we call as wood is actually the xylem or more correctly, secondary xylem. Secondary xylem is the xylem produced during the secondary growth or thickening in gymnosperms and dicot plants. Xylem tissue is composed of four types of cells. Tracheates, vessel members, xylem fibers or wood fibers and xylem parenchyma. Tracheates and vessel members are together called as tracheary elements. They are the actual water conducting cells. An important feature to be noted about xylem is that most of the xylem components are dead at maturity. Only xylem parenchyma cells are living cells. Okay, first let's see what tracheates are. Tracheates are primitive water conducting cells. They are elongated, tapering cells with narrow lumen. At maturity, they have thick hard cell walls due to deposition of lignin. Lignin is a cross-linked phenolic polymer. Lignin deposition makes these cells dead, but still lignin has some important roles in the transport of water. You know that plant cell wall is made up of polysaccharide components, mainly cellulose, also hemicelluloses and pectins. They are highly hydrophilic, which means that they have a high affinity to water, whereas lignin is more hydrophobic, or in other words, lignin cannot be easily wet. Thus, lignin makes it possible for xylem conducting cells to conduct water efficiently. The hard lignified walls have one or more rows of border pits. By the way, what is a pit? A pit is a cavity or a thin portion in the lignified cell walls of tracheids and vessels. 
they help in the lateral movement of water between these cells. Border pit means a pit which is overarched by the cell wall. Tracheids are placed end to end in long vertical rows. Water and minerals are transported from one tracheid to the next through the pits in the end walls. Transport of water and minerals is the major function of tracheids. Being thick walled, they also give mechanical support to the plant. Vessel members are short, cylindrical or tube-like dead cells with hard lignified walls and larger lumen than tracheids. They don't have tapering ends. Here you can see the difference between a tracheid and a vessel member. The lignin deposition on the cell walls of the vessel members is not uniform. It could be annular thickening which is in the form of rings, spiral or helical thickening, scalariform or ladder like thickening, reticulate or network like thickening or a pitted thickening. The vessel members are placed end to end in vertical rows to form elongated pipe like structures called vessels. So I hope you got the difference between a vessel member and a vessel. Vessels are also called tracheae. The name trachea is given to xylem vessels by an Italian botanist, Marcello Malpighi, because of the similarity between the morphology of xylem vessels and that of the trachea or the windpipe seen in insects and animals. The end walls of each vessel member have pores. These end walls with pores are called perforation plates. The vessel members in a vessel are connected by the perforation plates. There are two kinds of perforation plates. Simple perforation plates and multiple perforation plates. In a simple perforation plate, the cross wall or end wall of the vessel member has only a large pore. Such vessels with simple perforation plates will just look like our water pipes. On the other hand, in a multiple perforation plate, the end wall contains a number of pores. Simple perforation plate is more advanced than the multiple perforation plate. Vessels also have pits, like we saw in truck kits. In the vessels, water moves from one vessel member to the next, mainly through perforations in the end walls and also through pits. This means that in vessels, water can move more freely than in tracheids. So vessels are more advanced water conducting cells than tracheids. In eucalyptus trees, xylem vessels formed by several vessel members are sometimes as long as 3 to 6 meters. Being thick walled, vessels also give mechanical support. You know that all vascular plants, that is plants belonging to the groups pteridophytes, gymnosperms and angiosperms have xylem and phloem. Now the question is, do all vascular plants have both tracheids and vessels in their xylem tissue? And the answer is no. In pteridophytes and most of the gymnosperms, xylem vessels are absent. In these primitive plant groups, Primitive water conducting cells or the tracheids form the main water conducting system. In angiosperms, both tracheids and vessels are formed. But here, the advanced water conducting cells, that is vessels, form the main water conducting system. If we take a cross section of the stem of a gymnosperm, for example a pinus tree, it will look like this under the microscope. Here is the secondary xylem region or wood. Each of these cells is a tracheid. There is a resin duct also. Now suppose that I took the cross section of the stem of an angiosperm tree, for example a poplar tree. If we look at it under the microscope, we can see the anatomy like this. Here in the secondary xylem region, along with the tracheids, you can see some big holes or in other words, some wider cells, and they are the xylem vessels. The smaller cells that you see in the xylem region are mostly tracheids. Because of the presence of vessels, 
The wood of angiosperms looks like there are many holes or pores in it. So it is called porous wood. On the other hand, gymnosperm wood doesn't have vessels or pores. So it is called non-porous wood. Gymnosperm wood is also called soft wood, whereas angiosperm wood is called hard wood. These terms actually do not mean the hardness or softness of wood, but they are used to differentiate between gymnosperm wood with tracheids and angiosperm wood with vessels. Xylem fibers are the sclerenchyma fibers of xylem. They have highly thickened walls and obliterated or indistinguishable central lumens. They are generally dead cells, but interestingly there are reports that living xylem fibers also exist. This paper by Fan and Leshem reports that xylem fibers with living protoplasts are seen mainly in shrubs and subshrubs. Another scientific paper by Dumroff and Elmore also reports the presence of living fibers. Xylem fibers may either be septate or aseptate. Septa means cross wall or partition. So septate fibers are fibers which have transverse septa or partition across the lumen. Aseptic fibers have no septa. Septic fibers mostly have protoplast inside them. They store food materials in the form of starch and oils. Being thick walled, the main function of fibers is to provide mechanical support. Xylem parenchyma cells are the parenchyma cells that are associated with xylem. They are living cells. They are thin walled and their cell walls are made up of cellulose. The main function of xylem parenchyma cells is storage of food materials in the form of starch or fats. In the secondary xylem of trees, there are two types of parenchyma, wood parenchyma and xylem ray parenchyma or medullary rays. Wood parenchyma cells are elongated in the vertical direction. Ray parenchyma cells are elongated in the radial direction. In addition to storage of food materials, the ray parenchyma cells also help in the radial conduction of water and solutes. Based on the origin, there are two types of xylem, namely primary xylem and secondary xylem. Primary xylem develops from the procambium of apical meristem. Secondary xylem is produced during secondary growth in gymnosperms and dicots. Secondary xylem develops from the vascular cambium, which is a lateral meristem. During the primary xylem formation, the xylem elements, which develop first, from the procambium form the protoxylum. Xylem elements developing later but before the secondary xylem form the metaxylem. Metaxylem cells have bigger lumen than that of the protoxylum cells. In stems, the protoxylum lies towards the center of the stem or pith and the metaxylem lies towards the periphery or outside. This type of primary xylem is called endark. In roots, the condition is just opposite. The protoxylum lies towards periphery and metaxylum lies towards the center of the root. Such an arrangement of primary xylem is called exarch. So I hope that you got a nice idea about the xylem tissue, its components and functions. And that's all for this video. In the next video, we will discuss about fluid. Thank you for being with me and stay tuned.